Okay, we're back on this 2014 Prius. The one that came low on charge, 375 grams of refrigerant was recovered. And the factory quantity was 420 grams, what it should be. But yet, it had a clear sight glass. And the Toyota manual in one of their papers about charging refrigerant tells you, you know, you have a clear sight glass, you're as good as gold. Uh, or one of the YouTube professors or one of those couch potato engineers who sit and read stuff on paper um, Or one of the guys trying to sell you a product that says they can charge a system by tell you if it's full or not on a variable displacement compressor uh, Definitely not going to happen under all conditions only ideal conditions So here we go. We're going to charge this one up 420 grams. So here's our scale Here's where we're sitting right now I'm going to open up the refrigerant valve to release the refrigerant. So let's go. One, two, three, go. And we're off to the races. And the refrigerant is going in the system. And this is how all vehicles go. It only takes about 30 seconds to fill the system up. And there you go. Oh, I closed it a little too fast. Let's get a little squirt in there. Boom. Okay. So we'll stop right there. And that's all it takes. And you always can tell when somebody doesn't know what they're doing because they have to start the car and jerk off the little can to get it to full and they take a long time because they didn't do a good vacuum and they don't know how to use the gas loss to their advantage. So we have a full system here now and if we remember in video one what our pressures were, I'm taking no temperature test or anything like that. Sorry, I don't have none of my gauges set up because I'm trying to keep this super simple without super fancy equipment or anything like that. Uh, basically using your hands and your senses of course if you do this all the time you know temperatures usually just by touching and feeling and remember this was the vehicle only 37,000 miles 2014 supposedly its first air conditioning recharge and we're off and running uh, remember I had a restrictive air filter in the first video I took the air filter out and it was one of those really good like HEPA type um, you know pretend HEPA type, it's not true HEPA, but it was really HEPA, you wouldn't feel no flow of air. And a true HEPA this size, you wouldn't feel air going through it, to it with a normal little blower fan. So, what do we have here? We have a running operating system. It no longer has 375 grams in it, it has 420 grams in it. So, I didn't close that down. So let's let it run for a minute. And you can see we have a, a clear sight glass. And as you can see, our sight glass looks a little green, orangish, because I put UV trace dye in the system to look for future leaks. So we still have the same result here. We have a vehicle that has a clear sight glass when it was low on refrigerant and we have a vehicle with a clear sight glass when it's filled up to factory specification with refrigerant. We have a vehicle that still has roughly a 38-42 degree uh, suction line, sorry about that. My coffee hasn't kicked in yet. Um, we still have cold air coming out of the dash, but it's not a hot day. It's only 52 degrees outside. And if you remember before, in video number one, when I was running this system, we had roughly 108 PSI on the high side. And we had uh, 30 to 32 on the low side. We're still within two of PSI, three PSI of the high side, going from a low system to a full system. get it out of recycle mode because this is all cold air in here we don't want to recycle cold air we want the hot air off the engine being pulled in because it's so cold the ambient temperature is so cold that um, getting some of this mixed air when the fan comes on like right now the radiator is not even hot enough to barely generate heat except for the air comes across hits the hot engine and pushes and gets sucked inside here now if I had my temperature gauge down inside the air intake 
I'm gonna guess with the mixed air of 52 degrees and this hot air that I could feel being pulled up right here, right at this point, that's probably about 100 degrees, 90 some degrees. We probably have an air entering the evaporator at roughly about 74 degrees. I'm coming up with this with my experience of doing this every day using temperature sensors at all these points. So I'm loading the system a little bit. As this engine is getting hotter and hotter, from my first video, the engine was cool. So it, was barely, it barely had any warmth of the day in it. And our high side pressure, taking barely warm air, mixing it with 52 degree ambient air, our high side was lower. Now, ah, it opened. So now that the engine is warmer, thermostat has opened, I'm now pumping hot coolant across the radiator. And now when the fans are running, I actually have warm air coming out of here instead of relying on pulling cold air through cold coolant when I first started up in the, from the first video. And then the slightly warm engine, the air would hit the engine, pick up a little heat and get sucked in to go in over across the evaporator. Now I'm to the point where I have hot coolant and it's going across the radiator. So I'm actually pumping out some warm air from the condenser heat plus the radiator heat. Before it didn't have the radiator heat because the engine was too cold. And so now I have that slightly high 90s, 100 degree plus air going into the evaporator, slowly causing the high side to come up now. Much different readings than we had before. But look, we're back to where we were before. When we had 375 grams, we had 30 to 32 PSI on the low side but now we have 420 grams. We still have 30 to 32 PSI on the low side. But doesn't that little jerk off can from the auto parts store, auto pro, pro fill, pro shit, uh, that garbage that has a little um, uh, gauge on it and the little gauge goes somewhere in the green area. Wouldn't that be in the green area? But when it was low, wouldn't that still be in the green area? And remember, with the little jerk off auto parts can with the little gauge, you don't get to see what the high side's doing. So, variable displacement compressor, low ambient day. When you're not under full load, you'll, even if I had 275 grams in there, I'd get basically the exact same readings. 275, 375, 420 factory fill, basically the same readings. And if my engine didn't warm up, if I could eliminate the engine and keep it all electric without adding the heat of the radiator coming up and sucking in here, our low side would still be down at around 108. This higher high side is not from the extra refrigerant. It's from the extra heat being added. So let's eliminate that extra heat. Boom, recycle. So now we're taking in the air from in here and going over the evaporator that's located here. The air is going up, up inside here, right here. That's where we're taking the air. We're not taking it from outside now. That was just shut off. So now the heat load of the evaporator is down. And it reflects uh, right now, it reflects on our low side. We just went from 30, 32, and we dropped down to 27 because our evaporator that is connected to the low side of the circuit is not getting hot air from right here. That's at around 100 degrees being sucked right up, going through these vents and going across the evaporator. That's not happening. It's taking that cool air from in the car and just recycling it over itself. No heat load. And this is still floating somewhere right around there. And we have radiant heat now that the coolant is hot. So we have this say 160 degree radiator that's located within a half inch of the condenser having radiant heat. Even though we have fans sucking cool air in this direction, you have a hot heat exchanger within a half inch of touching the condenser that has radiant heat that's actually radiating outwards like sunlight striking the back of the condenser adding heat 
chew the condenser now that the engine coolant is hot. All right, I think that's enough for today. Uh, if you watched the first video and second video, you got to see that a system that is low on charge that doesn't work on a warm day, that only had 375 degree, uh, grams, still gives you a nice crystal clear sight glass because you know the guys on the YouTube channels tell you if you have a clear glass, that must mean you're full and everything is golden or the AC Pro crap that with the little jerk off cans where you read that little dial they give you with the green range and it means it's good. No good, no bueno dudes. And uh, see you in the next video. And um, the guys who are trying to sell you something, I'm, I'm not trying to sell nothing, just try to spread knowledge. Don't listen to salesmen. Salesmen are the sneakiest, low life, truth twisting, conniving scum of the earth. Um, all right, see you guys later in the Testo 4 S-Man 450, uh, 480V. Still all outstanding for automotive use. I find this to be a really good gauge. Oh, and you could beat the hell out of, try that with your Testos. Uh, and I'm talking about the Testo 557. It's not gonna take a beating and keep on ticking. All right, see you guys.